Welcome to International Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. International Hawaii showcases local import and export businesses to help others new to the industry. Today, my guest is David Pang, founder of Ilio Products and Malama Eco Products. And they're a local import company. And I think they have a lot of lessons to share. So I'm excited. So David, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about um, Ilio Products and when you started and how you got started with this business? So I've been in the pet industry for almost 30 years now. And Ilio, as many of you guys might know, actually means dog. So we started about um, in 2007, and we started off bringing in pet supplies. You know, um, I had a few pet stores in Asia, and I brought it in. The things that we developed and we manufactured there, we ended, when I moved back to Honolulu, uh, we brought those items back to Honolulu with us. And we kind of launched it out of pet store here for a while as well. Um, and then what we found was the distribution side, the retail side for us was much more, um, what was growing a lot faster than our pet store side. So, you know, we, we basically handed that business over to one of our employees uh, to, to, to own and run. And then we just started focusing on the distribution and import side since that side was um, taking up majority of my time anyway. So, so we're right now, you know, we had people seeing us, we, we have a few brands that we, we, we manufacture and we take care of and we import as well as we export out of the U.S. into the other countries. Um, some of the products you probably hear is obviously Ilio products, all the puppy pads and all the treats and snacks, um, Malama Eco, um, Paina part of uh, supplies, which is um, all the stuff that you probably see at Longs and like you know, disposable plates and all the eco-friendly stuff. We started Malama Eco about 12 years ago just because we thought it was the right thing to do. Um, we do some dog treats that we manufacture out of a place in San Diego that we export across to, the, to Europe as well as to um, South America and Asia. That's kind of what we do with a little bit of everything, not, not much. Wow, so you actually have an export business? Yeah. Where you manufacture on the mainland? Correct. Yeah, I can't manufacture here. It's actually too expensive. <laughs> but we have a place in San Diego where we manufacture some of our dog treats that we sell, obviously, on the mainland. We sell it actually here. So it's a teeth treat brand, the dental treat. So you wow. see that long, you see that Don Quixote, Foodland, Pines, you know, most of the stores you see it at. And then um, we export that out as well. So we've sold that in Japan, we sold it in China, we sold it in Europe, uh, we sell it in Mexico. Um, where else have we sold it in? Yeah, so I think Mexico, the guys that sell that we sell in Mexico, they, they take it out to other parts of, of Central and South America. And I just kind of leave it up to them. I, I don't get into that after that second year. Wow, that is amazing. So when you first started, let me rewind a little bit because you went through it so fast. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, no, a lot no, of moving, okay. there's a lot of moving parts here, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you first started, you said you started with the pet products and you were actually manufacturing? Yeah, so we, we partnered up with a person in Asia and China to start and we manufactured. The first thing we did was our puppy pads and we bought it here. Uh, we actually made, made the puppy pads for our, a chain of pet stores I was involved with in Taiwan. So it was being made in China for my Taiwan stores. And when I moved back to Honolulu, I just flipped them over as well. Because at that time, you know, in 2007, no one had that pad, that type of pad that we have now here. Now, obviously, since then, other companies have brought product on board. But when we first brought it here, Nobody had it, and it was just so far and so much better and, and much more affordable than anything on the market. So, oh, interesting. Just, it's yeah. like I always thought puppy pads always existed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, initially the puppy pads was on the market was basically a piece of plastic with some newspaper on top, and they basically <laughs> glued it together. That was that was the original puppy pad, and you know, wow. and the ones we have now have you know other proprietary things in there like pheromones and other things that make the dog want to go through it, use it, make the trouble not it won't leak and all those other things. And we were one of the, um, we're lucky. I was living in Asia. Like I said, I saw those products in Japan and in Asia. I'm like, wait a minute, there's none of this in America yet, or at least in Hawaii yet. And then we brought it back. We bought it in. So and did you help with the product. design and manufacturing of that product? Or you was it just the bringing it in? Uh, no, so initially we just spec'd it out. Um, I knew in, in, in Hawaii, people are very price sensitive. And what they were making at that time was really a super, super high-end product, which oh. when I looked at the numbers, it wouldn't really work in Hawaii. It would just be too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of expected, I was like, okay, how low can we go before this thing actually stops working <laughs> <laughs> at an effective rate where people are going to want it? And we, so it took us a few months to kind of understand the process of making that. And kind of once we, we got to that number, of what the formulation and what the ratios on everything were, then you know, then we made our to 
to our specification. So all of the stuff that you see in the stores, whether it's under the Malama brand, the Big Kahuna brand, or the Kanaka brand, everything is spec out. Um, and it's not just a puppy pad, but our dental treats, our, our snacks, everything else has a specification, right? X amount of weight, X amount of grams, X amount of density, all of that. We, 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 it's not, we don't, very seldom do we just say, okay, I walk into a restaurant, I order something off the menu with these factories. You know, we kind of go into, hey, we want this. Can you wow. make X for us? Well, I think a lot of people, and I think where a lot of people get caught up is, you know, now with the advent of Alibaba, it's easily, oh, you know, I want this. I go to Alibaba, I search for it. And you don't really understand that, you know, the, the, the menu that a factory offers you may not really be what you want. So mm -hmm. there, there is some time and understanding you got to put into it to make sure like, okay, are there specifications in the, the item that you want that makes your item unique and different and, uh, and, mm -hmm. more and that valuable. fits the market, right? That exactly. Uh, understanding your marketplace, right? So, you know, a lot of people, they, they go out about buy something, just chip in it, like, wait a minute, this is not what I thought it was. Well, you know. Wow. You, so you do you need to, do you actually have that expertise in-house to help you design all these different products or do you consult with somebody or? You're looking at the guys. I, I learned all of this over time. <laughs> wow. right? You just kind of just learn as you go along, you know. I mean, one of the other things we do is we, you know, we also develop and we own Grenades Gum. So, uh, you know, and we developed that from scratch. There's no other gum like that. And it was just an idea that myself and my partners had. And we're like, hey, let's go figure it out. For two years, we, we learned how to make gum. We oh went to a whole bunch of factories that were basically like, why can't we do this? You know, and they're like, no, you can't do that. They're yelling at us. I'm like, why? You know, because we don't know any better, right? I mean, we're asking <laughs> the simple question of why. And they said, well, because we've never done it. I'm like, well, that doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you've yeah. never done it. So yeah. that's a different answer. Yeah. So hence, you know, the like grenades gum is, is, was something wow. that was an so idea that just... started from scratch. And learning on the fly and trial and error. and Yeah. You know, and you make mistakes and you hiccups and, you know, a lot of traveling, a lot of flying. And you know, I'm slowing down. Obviously, chewing last year junk was kind gum. Of like, <laughs> yeah, chewing a lot of bad gum <laughs> over the couple of years. Yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. That's so interesting. That's so crazy. Yeah. How did, um, fun, right? so once you have your product, how do you go about finding your suppliers or like, because you're the wholesaler, right? How do yeah. you? We're, we're a little different, right? Because we're vertically and, integ and horizontally integrated. So we kind of distribute our own products. We sell our own products. We manufacture okay. products with partners on, on things, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm a little different than the most. I know I don't look like it, but I'm actually three quarters Asian. I'm, I'm half Taiwanese, quarter Chinese, and a quarter Hawaiian. The Hawaiian really, really won, won that fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so my whole, my mom's side of the family all still lives in Taiwan. So, I mean, and I'm just growing up. I, I know I don't look like it, but again, I speak fluent. I was born there. I understand the culture. So, you know, just um, when it started, it was just a bunch of friends who kind of helped me get started. We were kind of in some of that business in manufacturing and stuff. And they kind of put me in contact. And it's over the years, friends meet friends. You guys go out, have dinner. And just over time, and then, you know, you start dealing with factories that you use. Um, for instance, the, the, the puppy pad factory, we've dealt with them for over 20 years now. We have the same oh. factory. And then he's also put me in contact with other people manufacture so my way so a lot of my things are really relationship based so mm -hmm. i go into it they know who i am they know we're legitimate they don't think that we're just a you know somebody clicked on me on alibaba or alipay or something where you're they're just where they're like, okay i know dave's done business he kind of knows what he's doing um he's a legitimate business we're going to get paid <laughs> you know, kind mm -hmm. of, you know right so that that all adds to the um the validation to help you get what you want done. And so when you ask them to do things, then it's a little, it's a lot different than if you're just clicking on a link for a factory mm -hmm. that you met at a trade show and say, oh, can you guys make these modifications for me? And they're looking at it like, we don't even know you. We're going to invest this time yeah. and effort and we might not get anything out of it. And you're just going to shop our place and everything else. So, so it's a, for, you know, I, I hate to make it sound like that, but, you know, I'm going to definitely in a completely different, different circumstance than most people out there. So, wow, but that's that's really good because you have yeah, friends and family already. Exactly, and then we got eyeballs up there, right? So kind of helped me out. So, so. but then yeah. you also did a lot of traveling yourself. Like yeah, um, on face? average, I used to average about two hundred thousand miles a year flying. Wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's nice because they give you a lot of perks, but it's just tiring, and I'm I'm getting up there. So you know, I, my goal last year or in 2019 was to end the year under 200, which I did. Which the first time in like six years it was 
And last year, obviously, with COVID, we didn't really travel at all. Zero. <laughs> zero. Pretty well, not zero. I actually flew to Asia in January. <laughs> and, wow. and that's when I realized COVID was a real thing. I was in Taiwan, wow. and they were already, this is in January, they're already locking down. And I came back, and I, we got all our PPE for our, our warehouse and our down. employees. Yeah, and we, we got all the people, we got all the cleaning, we got everything up front. Wow. So we it all. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. How, how important do you feel that face-to-face -face is, like the traveling oh, and going to the factories? And... Absolutely. I think it's, it's priceless because it's, um, when you're blasting emails off back and forth, there's a, such a level of um, impersonalness, right? For that, if that's a real world, real mm -hmm. world. Where, you know, a lot of these people who are especially factories, they're, they're like us, they're like me, right? You know, they built this from themselves. And, you know, if they see you building something, there is a level of like, oh, he's one of us or she's one of us. And, and if you're sincere and you, and you come with references, then it, they also look at you like, oh, okay, you know, I can work with this guy and then breaking bread. And, you know, like I do a lot of business in Asia and Asia still done a mm -hmm. lot of fashion way where you sit down, you have meals, Mm. That was a drink, maybe a few too much drinks, but you know, it's 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 still done. And that now. builds the the relationship. Exactly right. I mean, you know, if one of those things, if you cannot, if you have two beers and you fall on the ground and you can't remember what you said, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> well, we really want to do business with this guy, right? Kind of. <laughs> so there, there's a level of where you know when things in person, you know, the the face to face time is as much about your character as about your business acumen and. Mm. Um, your 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 business itself like do you really want to do business with this person and it goes both ways and i you know i look at that as well and, I, I, and i've met people and like yeah no i don't think our personalities match up too well and mm. so you know you, part of this is you want to be in business with someone that you know you can count on and trust because i got to come back here turn around and, and face my clients and my customers and, and they got to be able to trust me so it, it, there, mm -hmm. there is a chain effect in there right where it's, it's only as good as the weakest link. Mm. Right? So having these people tell you, okay, I'm going to get your computer, your, your, your order out in 35 days. Well, it better be 35 days because I'm telling everybody here it's 35 days. <laughs> That's it. Then I look like the bad guy. I look like the liar, right? So you, wow. there's got to be a level of trust there. Mm. I would say make sure um, you know the people you're dealing with. You know, in the Hawaii culture, you know, where you show up somewhere and you know you get somebody on some omiyagi, where some kona coffee and some mac nuts, that goes such a long way. Mm -hmm. you know, even when I go, whenever I'm doing a business in Europe and you know, on the mainland, uh, you know, I always show, I never show up empty-handed. I'm always getting mac nuts and kona coffee, helping the Hawaii, the other Hawaii <laughs> industries, right? And it, it, they're That's just awesome. like, yeah, and they're they're like, oh my god, you know, it just, yeah, I'm sure it just starts way. the conversation off right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard for someone to give you something like, you know, and be, and then be, somebody has to be upset at you for giving them something. Right? So it just starts the conversation off on the right foot. So, so how did you, when you first started importing to Hawaii, mm -hmm. how did you start? And then do you have any like memorable challenges or problems oh, that you faced yeah, um, that you could just share so people don't so do that? <laughs> so I'm a firm believer of hire into your weakness. Like do what you're good at and pay someone else to do everything else because there's no way you can do everything. So I've been with American Custom Brokers for over 20 years. And I, again, I was there long, all the guys who were there have all retired and I'm still around, so that's <laughs> a long time. Um, but yeah, but you know what? I, I use them as a great sounding board, a great reference for information so that I, I can make sure that even before I decide to do something, is there any special things I need to know about this specific stuff so that I, I make sure it's even worth my time to get into this business? Or is it going to be too much of a headache importing and the certain regulations and filing mm -hmm. and are there certain certificates I'm going to get? Is the factory going to get those certificates for me? All of those things. So, I mean, the guys at ACB, uh, American Customs, they've been a great resource. And I'll say use them, find out, talk to people. So, you know, um, one of my horror stories is, well, it was it had nothing to do with ACB either. It was, I was making some products that was actually going straight to the mainland for one of my customers. And I get notification from the factory that they, they, they loaded my container without ready to go. And so it was a small port. So the small ports in China go from a small port to one of the big ports and gets in those big ships. And then, so it looks like, think of Young Brothers, right? It's a little things like that. They fit eight containers on. If you guys have been there in Hong Kong, you've seen those little, put, those little putty barges I fit like four or six containers on top. So I guess one of them sink, sunk. 
Oh, oh my and god. No one, no one told me. So your no. shipment just you're like waiting for it and it just I'm never shows it. up. Like, Wait, where's my arrival notice? <laughs> I, I call and they're like, oh, sorry. It's the bottom <laughs> of the China Sea. I'm like, what? Uh, and then uh, I have to sit there and explain it. And so yeah, so that's pretty much as bad as it gets. You know, I guess I guess young brothers have that a few months to, to go to. And um yeah, that's as bad as it gets is when something ends up at the bottom of the ocean. So. <laughs> Yeah. Luckily, knock on wood, it's happened once in my life and over the over the last 20 plus years. So and it happened good. early on. So it's good. Yeah. But you know, I would tell people the uh, find a broker, like anybody, anything else, whether you go from a lawyer, an attorney, a doctor, mm -hmm. an accountant, and this case a broker, you want to interview them, talk to them, make sure you're comfortable with the team and what they've done. Um and how long they've been around and you know are they doing other things in your market that that you know so they're familiar with yeah, your you bring in yeah and you want to make sure that they're you know that they're on it right um and then pick around i mean they're obviously i use ac i use them forever um but there's other companies in time right mm -hmm. and so meet them see which one works personality wise for you so that you have that ease so that when you hand things to them you're comfortable and then you can go focus on what you do best you know whether it's sale manufacturing distribute trucking delivering whatever it may be so that's interesting that you can actually go to a broker like if you just have an idea of you want to bring something in yeah. they'll help and you yeah they'll tell you like okay this, this can be brought in this cannot be brought in. for instance we want to bring in t-shirts they say oh you know every year there's a quota you can only bring in x amount so if you don't bring it in then you're you know you're too late huh. sorry so they'll they'll let you know oh huh. Right? Or if you're, oh, you know what? Oh, the, uh, the punitive tariff just hit. <laughs> this is going to cost you 50% more than what you thought. Mm -hmm. Pricing model doesn't work, right? So all of that. Oh. I, I ask ACB on any time, any new ideas, I ask them, okay, are there any tricks on this? Are there any hurdles I need to be looking out for? I mean, what are the tariffs that are going to be coming in? Are there any special certifications, any government, you know, mm. um, requirements? That's good. Right, that you know, hey, I'm, do I need a vet certificate? Do I need a USDA on um, authorization on that side where the factory has a USDA number? I mean, all these type of things you need to know in advance because what you don't want land here, and realize you need it because you thought you could do it all by yourself, and then and the container sits on the dock for three months as you get all these paperwork, and it's literally the first couple of weeks is forty dollars a day, the next couple of weeks is eight dollars, and then it's two hundred dollars a day. Wow! So it, it adds up quick. Right, so you know, do a you know pound of you know prevention, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth you know pounds and pounds. In this case, tons of cure, <laughs> a ton of cure, right? So, and so they're not like, I'm just thinking they're not like lawyers, right? Like they won't charge you as soon as you got them on the phone and asking. No, you questions. know, I mean, like I said, I I've, I've asked them, and, and maybe it's my relationship with them for 20 plus years, but I call them all the time, and I'm hey, yeah, I'm and they're just it. happy to share. Oh yeah, and they're like, hang on, let's look it up, and then they'll send me an email oh, that's good. Up or something. Yeah, and they're and like I said, the guys at ACB, they're great. You know, they, mm -hmm. they understand that there's challenges, and they they want to work with everyone because you know I think at the end of the day, everybody in Hawaii really roots for everybody else in Hawaii. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that's a good thing. I think that whole you know Hawaii Kamaaina family culture. I mean, everybody roots. You know, yeah, we're top. There's a level of competition with everybody, but I think everybody at the end of the day really roots for everyone else. To succeed. Mm -hmm. No one really wants to see another person fail and have things blow up and lose their life savings or anything else. But I think it's so um, interesting. Like once I'm figuring out this whole import export business, and yeah. a lot of it is wholesaling to retailers. Yeah. And it's like you it don't is. realize what goes into these products that you just see at the store. On the yeah. Like Believe me, under like COVID, it was even complexity. more challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it was even more challenging under COVID. Yeah. It's so crazy. And so you had you were mentioning to me before, like some of the tariffs and the policies that have mm -hmm. been happening with this last oh. administration. Wow, yeah. How has it been affecting you? Um, there's been a few times, three times, um, where we get notification that, hey, the tariffs are in, starting at the end of the month. We're like, and is the minute. broker, the broker will tell you? Yeah, like, hey, Dave, guess what's happening? that bill passed and it starts the end of the month. We're like, wait a minute, I got stuff in the pipeline. I mean, we know for us, we plan things out like four, five months, six months in advance, mm. you know, where we submit the prices to the retailers and everything's done. And all of a sudden, wow. you know, halfway through, you know, we get hit. I mean, three years ago with the Christmas, um, when the tariffs went in, 
you know, we had a whole Christmas buy and everything in for the stores, all the Christmas bags and garlands and everything was coming in. And all of a sudden it's like, what do you mean 25%? I'm not even making 25%, <sighs> you know? Okay. And they're like, well, that's the law. So, you know, it, it hurt to- And it's already you know, ordered. And... It's already ordered, it's already paid for. Oh. The fact, the, and the retailers are like, hey, you submitted this to the prices, we, we authorize you on these prices. This is all we're gonna pay you. And you just sit there and you just take it, you know? <sighs> so that's, 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 that's why things matter, you know? Um, that's why having competent people in my mind in, in, in places matter because it doesn't, I mean, I don't know where anyone else is watching this, the political spectrum where they land, but thinking China's paying for these tariffs, you're out of your mind. Guys like me yeah. paid, we paid a lot. Over the last several years, I can tell you, and that prevented me from wow. hiring more people and upgrading things. It's, and it's not going anywhere. It's, 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 it's you know, not productive. And things at the shelf gets more expensive mm. for, for the average consumer, right? Like, uh -huh. You raise it 25%, yeah. I got to pass it on. I can't not make money, yeah. you know? Yeah. Dave, Dave, Ilio, Ilio is a dot com, not a dot org, right? We're not here to be <laughs> I was giving stuff away to lose money. You know, I don't have a you know, grant somewhere else to pay me back after the fact. That so, is so crazy. Yeah, so I mean, I it, it of, does make a difference. Yeah, but are you able, because you have a relationship, can you sometimes work out deals to kind yeah, of, so, with I mean, your manufacturers to help you? Yeah, so luckily, you know, we were with the same manufacturers for a long time. They, they knew about it. And so they said, uh -huh. okay, you know what? On these couple that we know you're going to get nailed on, we'll give you a few points. Obviously, they never covered the whole thing. And then, you know, with the stores, we said, look, we got to figure something out. I can't uh -huh. lose, yeah. you know, $20,000 on this container. I'll be out of business, right? Uh -huh. So everybody, I think in those circumstances, again, it's great you that we're in Hawaii. You can kind of share a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. So every, like, being in Hawaii, like everybody's like, okay, we understand. How about on this one here because it's submitted, but then on the next one, we'll let you do it. We'll, we'll make something up kind of deal. We'll do, we'll do a makeup down the way, right? So things like that have happened. And, and again, yeah. and part of it is the relationship you have with your manufacturer and the relationship you have with your customers. Mm -hmm. If you guys have been on this bond for such a long time, they know you're not playing anything and being mm -hmm. ethical and being very transparent on what you can and can't do and delivering on what you say you're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. All those things help when something like that happens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? that's good. But again, that's why you go and you have dinners with people and you have a few drinks with people and you talk <laughs> not just you about- bring on <laughs> Yeah, you bring on Miyagi, right? And you don't only talk about work, you know, you understand that, you know, oh, they've got two kids, one boy, one girl, et cetera, et cetera. They know we've got mm. two boys, I mean, those kind of things, right? And mm -hmm. when people look at you, not as a number, a vendor number, and as a person with, you know, employees that, you're trying to take care of too, right? You know, yeah. they, they tend yeah. to be much more um, understanding when, when things like that are like far, so. far beyond your control. I mean, I had no way to control <laughs> that, right? Yeah. There's no way in the world I could ever even fathom that something yeah. like that would happen, right? You know, four months earlier when we're talking about what we're going to order, how much of everything. It's, it's, it's know, so it's crazy that well. you have to, I guess, because it's because we're in Hawaii too, and it's yeah. a shipping business that you're actually working or six months in advance, right? Oh, yeah. Like what's actually oh. happening? Well, like right now, we're already talking about this coming Christmas, 2021. What? Yeah, we're already putting together, okay, what do we want? You know, we, we just wrapped up. We got our final numbers from last Christmas in 2020. And we're looking at, okay, what do we want to bring in? What do we want to adjust, right? Mm. And March, April comes. Wow. We're done. We're You're done. putting in your orders already? Putting in our orders. The assembly line starts making our stuff in June. They ship everything out. It lands here in September and it goes in the stores. And when we start all over again. That is amazing. Yeah. So the, the lead <laughs> time, and you know, it's not really a Hawaii thing, Hawaii right? Because I mean, you know, yeah, granted, maybe any shipping. Get to, yeah, but any type of manufacturing that's not within mm. your country where you can just truck it in the next three days, I mean, you got to have some lead time. And if even in the US manufacturing for us, you know, we get, for instance, um, our dental treats are made in the United States, right? But our bags come from Asia. <laughs> no. Right? So you have to like time it so that exactly. It comes so when we, we're running low on bags, we're like, okay, here's 45 more days that we need to get the bags in. We better make sure wow. we have bags for the next 45 days. So, I mean, it's it, it's just one of those things. You just always have to be forward looking. And that was one thing I would adv um, advise anyone if, if you're watching to kind of be prepared for the potholes. You're going to happen, mm. you're going to fall. You're gonna fall. We fell, get back up, right? 
Um, there's find a good mentor. I say this, you know, I've given a few speeches at schools and things like that. I always say this, find a good mentor because a good mentor can help you through the way that you mm -hmm. might not see because you're so focused on the thing that you need to think you need to focus on to make your business successful. Mm -hmm. And you want to get kind of yeah. back. Yeah, and well, you know, you, you, you so focus on what you have that you kind of miss everything else around you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and having good support system and people who um, will, will be very, very transparent and honest with you because they want to see you succeed. That helps. I mean, I've had that along the way, some really good people, whether it's Steve Metter and some other people, um, you know, they, 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 they really kind of helped me make my um, vision a lot larger in a mm -hmm. sense of, okay, these things can happen. Right, and, and they do it because they feel like, you know, they've been successful in ass, but you know, part of it is, it goes both ways, right? Them telling you bad news is not a knock on you, it's that they care. So mm -hmm. you wanna, you actually wanna look for problems so that you can learn how to overcome them because you're gonna face them. So yeah. anyone yeah. that tells you you're perfect and you're great, and like, yeah, run, run really, really fast the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps if they've been through it before, right? And they exactly. know that they know what happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, and get as many as you can. Talk to as many people as you can, right? And use as many resources. Yeah. Yeah. Do what you do well. Bring other That's people for awesome. everything else. You know, wow, you have so much um, really good business advice for like any kind of business. I think that. Yeah. I think great, we all so. want to see everyone succeed in Hawaii. I mean, we're on yeah. literally we're on an island. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I think it's only us. we're on an island. If we don't all make it, we don't help each other out, then guess what? Yeah. You know, you're very, I mean, already, we already have a dream, right? Brain dream. That's awesome. out of here. We, we just got to figure a way to make it work for everyone. I think I everybody's got to do a little bit. And we've got to do a little bit to kind of make this place better every single day. That's, that's so. great. I really appreciate it. And so we can find your products all over the place. I have one last random question before yeah, we go ahead. close out. Uh -huh. So during this whole pandemic, what has been your favorite movie or TV show that you've been binging? If you do? Oh, uh -huh. um, you know what? this is going to sound such a cliche. Okay, I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> me personally and my kids, we've been big Star Wars fans forever. So I think you know where this is going, right? So my thing during this whole pandemic is, you know, The Mandalorian, obviously, right? Because it's such a different take on the whole Star Wars trilogy and mm -hmm. everything else so it's yeah, such a good story too it is you know and, and the, the way it ended i think they ended it right um so yeah I, i've been a star wars fan since 1976 when the first one came out <laughs> watched that capilani theater which is you know um, <laughs> sitting in a long line <laughs> yeah standing that long line that wrapped around pan am building i remember that being six years old i'm like what is this movie that you know that everybody wants to see and ever since then i've been hooked you know so I, we're big star wars fans obviously the mandalorian awesome. we kind of went through all of that multiple times. Hey, I think we missed something. Why are they talking about this? And wouldn't really go back and watch another <laughs> episode. Oh, I got it now. And so, so, I'm a Baby Yoda fan. <laughs> I think everyone's a Baby Yoda fan. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but that's good. But yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. But Cindy, thank you. I mean, you know, I know our time's kind of wrapping up, but any other questions you have for me, ask away. You know? No, I mean, I think we covered a lot. I mean, I did want to ask you about the pandemic, like if that has affected it your business a lot. It, it, initially, it was hard for us because, um, you know, all the PPE requirements, the stores changed the protocol. So it was really taking so long to make deliveries. So we're considered yeah. essential, right? Because, you know, a lot, everybody uses plates. So, you know, so all of, most of our stuff are, uh, are considered essential. And being that we, we deliver long to Walmart, Food Land, Safeway, Pines, I mean, all yeah. those, just about every store in Hawaii we deliver, right? So they got to have products. So you just kept going. So we just kept going. But what was happening was it was taking so much. What, what took five hours to deliver now took like eight hours to deliver because each store wow. had to wait. So you had to basically wait in line outside and they would call you in one by one. Oh, and every time I one see. person came in, they'd have to sterilize everything, clean everything up, and the next person wow. come in. You know, so it, it, it just took time. So, I mean, it, it impacted wow. our, our, our financials quite a bit in the sense of it just cost so much more to do everything. Wow, I didn't even think about that kind of stuff. All yeah, the stuff so, you know, that happens well, in the background. Yeah, so mm -hmm. all the backgrounds and then on a shelf and then, you know, your, your employees, you know. So we've actually, we actually had a few employees like, I, I can't work. My family's scared, you know, mm -hmm. where we, we had yeah. to go and hire people because our employees were like, no, I'm not working. Because, you know, early on, no one knew what this was or how bad it was going to be or anything else. And mm -hmm. it, it was pretty, it was pretty hearing where, you know, 
I was literally making deliveries every day just wow. to kind of help out, get, get everything done, you know? So I'd make deliveries halfway through the day, come in the office and try to catch mm -hmm. up on all my, the work I got to do in here the rest of the day. And so it's, wow. but yeah, the pandemic did affect us. It, it, it kind of made us smarter too. I think it made everybody a little smarter, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's been a challenging year to say the least. Um, I think everybody kind of stuck together, like I said, and hunkered down. But it, 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 it's no fun. I'm, I'm really waiting for it to go back to normal. <laughs> You know, yes. the vaccines kicked in. I think everyone's doing the same thing, but um, mm -hmm. but well, I'm just, glad. I'm glad you guys are hanging in there and doing well. And we're all, I think that's what everybody is. Everyone's just trying to hang on. Yeah, you know? survive. And I feel, yeah, again, <laughs> I feel my buddies' businesses. They weren't able to hang on, unfortunately. You know, and yeah. what has happened? A lot of them mm -hmm. didn't hang on, and you know, we we feel knock on wood. We feel very blessed that we had good partners understood who worked with us to kind of get mm -hmm. things going. And the part that people missed on this whole pandemic was a lot of our factories were shut down. Mm. Oh, the manufacturing side. Yeah, so we couldn't even get product. Mm. So there was, you know, so you know, we usually keep six weeks or so of inventory, and that was gone in like two weeks because everybody was hoarding. Wow. It, right, and then all of a sudden we just sat here and like there's not much. There was this mm. item trickling in. The factories weren't open, and or they open mm -hmm. only like three hours a day or whatever. So wow. It, it, it affected everything all around. There was mm -hmm. there was no. Now, you always want to look for a silver lining in something. Yeah, there really was. It was just the silver lining came after when you obtained all the knowledge, right? Where you, okay, if this happens again, I'm, I'm now prepared. <laughs> Learning experience. Exactly. That's, that's the silver lining of all this, that you're prepared for anything. And we hope nothing ever like this happens. But I sharing, know. Thank you so much for sharing. I think Thank you, you have... for inviting me on. It was, it was a good, yeah, it was no, it's, you've given a lot of great advice for a lot of starting businesses. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And that's awesome. Thanks. Stay tough. Hang in there. We will. We will. We don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on International Hawaii on ThinkTech Hawaii, and we'll see you next time.